To weekly weird news brought to you by Quentin Football in the post truth apocalypse. I'm Ben, and as always, I'm joined by Mike, Hello, Claire, hey. and P. Hey, who still hasn't left. <laughs> they will get bored eventually, and I'll drop it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a collection of things we found on the net this week. Some articles. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there's, there's stuff that's we've just amused us or horrified us or shocked us. All you just find a little bit macabre this week. Let's go with this one, start with this one. Surgeon stripped of license for carving his initials into patients' organs. <laughs> and the question mark, the question of these, why did this take so long? Apparently it's been going on for a while. It's mad that, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So it's more than one patient. I mean, it's kind of badass. <laughs> isn't it? It's like, look what I've done, I'm going to mark it. It's like the Mona Lisa but being signed by Da Vinci. Yeah, but it's horrifically... Yeah, they're never going to find out, are they? Or they shouldn't find out. <laughs> well, in a post-mortem. In a post-mortem. <laughs> or, it's like, why has this guy got SB tattooed on his liver or something? Or You know what I mean? Yeah. A British transplant surgeon has finally been stripped of his medical licence after infamously branding his rituals into patients' organs in late 2013. His initials. His initials, sorry. So maybe say, this is where... Rituals. <laughs> Maybe I'd heard about it from this then all them years ago. Yeah, but 2013, it's took him this long to strip... It's, oh, How did he do it? Oh, using an argon beam? Is that safe? I guess they... I don't know, we'll find out. That's how they cut through tissue. Yeah. It cries <laughs> it at the same time, doesn't it, basically? Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to be used to stop liver bleeds or draw directions for later. So I suppose if, you, if you, you're fixing one specific thing... Then you would leave a, a note for the surgeon who's coming in after you, maybe, or for yourself. Let's you see that. Little arrow to where you've got to fix. Well, yeah, you know, what's next to fix? fix yeah. However, he was branding his initials, as first reported by the Guardian in 2013. After a protracted back and forth about whether he'd be allowed to practice again, he's finally been struck off the UK medical registers. He's turned to two livers. Two livers he transplanted. That they. That they know about. That they know about, exactly. Yeah. The timeline of this saga is a crash course in the ills of medical bureaucracy, an investigation that led to a suspension after he was discovered, a resignation, a 2017 assault conviction and fine without prison time, and a 2020 suspension. I'm sorry, but if you're doing that, I'd say you should be struck off, shouldn't you? Yeah. Totally, I mean... Apparently, Brown was only caught because another surgeon saw his initials on a transplant <laughs> liver that hadn't healed. Jesus. Second is that during his back and forth legal and licensing woes, the surgeon co wrote a series of self published medical thrillers titled Scalpel Stories. Now, if that doesn't sound like a serial killer, I don't know what <laughs> it is. With a former transplant patient as co author. What's worse, one of the books is that a surgeon who burns his initials into a patient's transplant liver gets caught and endures public humiliation. Do you think this is a sexual fantasy? Maybe. About getting caught, the humiliation. Be, yeah, it's got to be fantasy based. Could be, yeah. He's doing it for shits and giggles, isn't he? Well, perhaps most jarring, however, is that instead of stripping the man of his job, his license, and his ability to profit of his and off his notoriety, the British medical establishment chose instead to engage in a years-long debate about whether it's actually that bad to brand another human's liver simply because you have the power to do so. I mean, OK, no one's died. No. I'm assuming. No, no, no one's died. Has it caused any complications with the people that... No, it's a standard procedure. Isn't it? Instead of just doing his uh, the directions, he's just doing his initials. But I mean, how, imagine how tiny they are. Yeah, but... I don't know, there's something not right about it, is there? It shouldn't be allowed, surely. It is a bit weird. <laughs> I'm kind of on the not gives a right. fuck kind right, of thing. Yeah, like, no, I'm on the, yeah, I'm on the fence. Who gives a fuck if it's not hurting anything? Who gives a fuck? Seriously, oh, get over saved, it, man. How many lives has he yeah. saved? Mm. How many lives did he save? I'm going to perform liver surgery on you one day. I'm going to study hard, go become a doctor. 
one day before my liver surgery on you and I do my initials in your liver. Fair enough. Crap Sweet. out, mate. As long as it's free, you don't charge me. Oh, be the NHS, it'll be fine. Happy days. <laughs> for seven years of medical school, good year, good luck funding that. Yay! Well, I've got seven years to fuck my liver. Give me some beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a beer, I've got to send you some beer. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I'm on the fence. I mean, I think it's a bit weird, but I also think it's definitely some. After writing the book, I think there's a sexual fantasy there. Could be. He likes the public humiliation, that's what gets him off. Yeah. So I'm going with it. Okay, moving on. Motorist found dead in field, mauled by badger after a car broke down. Fucking hell. Oh, the don't... badger didn't kill her, did it? No, the badger just ate her. Uh, but you want to bring fucking... You were up for wolves, bears and fucking hogs, weren't you? Yeah. Being bit reintroduced. Being reintroduced. And bison. And bison. This is badgers, mate. What I'm saying is that they used to be here. It's part of the ecosystem. Now, the ecosystem's been fine for a thousand years, though, them. I've always no, said well, badgers. Has, really, has it because of the soil of the badgers are our lions, mate? Don't fucking mess with our badgers. <laughs> there should be a badger on the England football team. There should be three badgers damn on the show. Straight, damn right. What relativity is there to England and fucking lions? Other than our lion heart. They're not lions, actually. They're leopards. They are leopards, technically. They're oh. heraldic lions, but they're yeah. actually leopards. Yeah. Either way, what connection does England have to them realistically? No. Badgers, vicious little buggers. Absolutely. Hard as nails. Don't back down. They're a bit like England in a way. They're little. Mm. We're only little, but they are feisty as fuck. Don't mess with them because they will tear your nose off or something like. But yeah, I think they'd be the... uh, They're not honey badgers. Normal badgers. badgers badgers Normal badgers are just Honey badgers are fucking... Honey badgers badgers are fucking lunatics. (laughs) Yes, I'll agree with you on that. But our badgers are notoriously Mm. vicious. They've got bear-like claws, for fuck's sake, and a vicious little bite. And if you go near them and they're not comfortable, they will attack you. Yeah, I've I've had a run-in with a badger. Have you? And they are not... Have you seen dead ones? Well, that is is the unfortunate (laughs) thing, isn't it, in this country? You only ever see a badger. I didn't get bested by a badger. (laughs) I I was was out lamping, lamping. <laughs> and lamping is a thing where you go out. It's one, illegal, that is. It's not illegal. We were given permission on the land. Right. We just went out at night. It's and very lamping. moral. And unethical. And we had a, a two-two rifle and a four-ten shotgun. The poacher's pal. This makes it sound like poaching, though, but it wasn't. It, it was perfectly illegal. And basically, we, we went out lamping, and I shot this rabbit. Went over, and I just heard this growl from the undergrowth where this rabbit was. I shone the torch, it's fucking bad, just bare, teeth bared, hunched, like that. And they're not, they're not and you small. Like my they're nemesis. not small. They are not small. <laughs> you're um, talking it was like, after your rabbit then? Oh, yeah, it was the rabbit, yeah. You're talking 40, 50 kilos mm. for a grown male. So, yeah, they're big it's, a big, it's a big dog kind of, but the way they are, they're... They're, they're, they're fucking they're, solid muscle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is a shame that you only see them dead on the side mm. of the road, generally. I've seen the odd one yeah. run past and things like that, but, yeah, I'm nearly 40, and I've seen the odd one. Never one seen or two one live, alive. Oh, I mean, I've never seen the one like that in the wild, which was quite prepared to eat me. Never <laughs> <laughs> done, go, on, go on, then, let's, let's hear crash. about it, then. Let's hear what happened. In a horrible story from over the Christmas period, a woman has reportedly been found dead and partially eaten by wildlife after a car broke down on December the 18th. Oof. The 55-year-old is thought to have wandered from a car after it broke down on a country road near Moncton in Ayrshire, Scotland. Well, that's no fucking surprise in Scotland, is it, actually? All of a sudden, this story is not so surprising. The AA Recovery Service was unable to find you at the time and a missing persons report was filed. However, now the body has been found in a piercing been mauled by a badger, or perhaps a fox, according to authorities. The victim is thought to have been from Airdrie, a town in North Lanarkshire. Oh, dear. How awful, though. I know. She phoned the breakdown service, but rather than waiting with the vehicle, she got out and walked away, cutting through the fields before going on to sadly pass away sometime later. Oh, hypothermia. Yeah. Oh, dear. Still, eaten by a badger. They'll eat you. Don't go walking across the countryside. What was she fucking thinking? Why did she leave the car? She just phoned the services. They're coming together. Yeah. 
what possesses to get the car in the middle of the night. See, what you'll find is she's like fallen down a little ditch or something and hit her head yeah. or something like that. Not self unconscious, but in the process, gained hypothermia, yeah. etc. Maybe never woke up. Like Dietlov Pass, where they, where they went, she went a bit nuts and thought, you know what, I'm going to have a walk. Mm. I'm too hot. They go too hot, don't they, hypothermia? Yeah. Go too hot, I'm going to go outside, I'm going to get warm, I'm going to, I'm going to cool down a bit. I'm too hot. This is well, a you know. horrible story. <laughs> <laughs> it really is, man. It's tragic, but you know. It's, who, it's who, Christmas or something like you buy a badger. this one? I did. <laughs> It's morbid motherfucker. It's Christmas and someone got eaten by a badger. Isn't this like... <laughs> it, it, what, what, what's this called? <laughs> weird news. Weird, 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 this weird, is weird. weird. I suppose it is weird. People More don't get eaten by badgers news. all the time. <laughs> I'm, I'm sticking with it. I stick by my choice. Stand by it. It's Christmas and someone's been eaten by a badger. That to me is weird. Yeah, man. Don't hear it every day, do you? You don't. Or a fox. Or a fox, either way. British wildlife eating people. Will it spiral? What if, what if the wolves and bears come? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you're okay with the wolves and bears and badgers. In remote quite good. areas. She's in a remote area. Do you know they can Stop walk? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That's the scary thing. Yeah, we're going to take their ankles they, off. What if they think, oh, it's a bit chilly up here. I don't like the Scottish <laughs> mountains. <laughs> Oh, oh, it looks a bit warmer over there. Oh, I'll go to down. Birmingham instead. Yeah, we'll go down to Birmingham and like yeah. start eating people out of McDonald's and things. Yeah. It could all spiral very quickly. Right now, a, gang of, a pack of wolves just burst in here and start eating Claire and <laughs> Just happen in your perfect utopia. That's what you want. No, I'm all about rewilding Britain, and if they were part of the ecosystem that was there before, before we killed it, he's one control. of them. It is. He's the Illuminati. <laughs> so justify introducing wolves into the cities. <laughs> Have I've a never pet said the cities. <laughs> Have a pet one, <laughs> one in each garden, and if if you like a bear, <laughs> everyone is to have a bear. Yeah, when you're paying your taxes to fund Bear Patrol, like in The Simpsons, there's <laughs> <laughs> a stealth bomber flying above with Bear Patrol on it, you'll be so happy then, will you? Ah, but then it's going to keep the badges in check, and this it? <laughs> what did we do about the bears? <laughs> so I get rhinos. Yeah. Oh, bears. and what do we do with the rhinos? <laughs> Don't worry, when the cold winter they'll freeze and die. <laughs> lions. <laughs> we'll get some lions in. <laughs> what happens the lions are killing people? We'll get some Brontorox. <laughs> Oh, I stand by it. I stand by my choice. <laughs> yeah, man. Yes, it's, I said macabre in the description. <laughs> right then, moving on. Time Traveller claims underground alien race will be discovered in August 2022. No, not another TikTok. No, another TikTok time traveller? Another one or the same one? Uh, I think it's another one. It is another oh, one, I think. Me. Yeah, a TikToker who claims to be from the future has warned yeah. humans will come into contact with underground species in this summer. So, what, so a species that's been living underground? Yes, that we don't, haven't heard about or never seen. Okay. <laughs> an anonymous person from the future known as the username... So anonymous, but known as a username again. <laughs> pastime travel at pastime travel. Give a list of important dates in 2022, and that was around New Year. A video captioned "Remember these dates" warns of catastrophic. catastrophic year with a volcano eruption on March 15th. Remember that date. Right. And a passenger plane disappearance on June the 28th. Remember that date as well, eh? We'll try. See if he's, rem- he's right, eh? March 15th, not that far off my birthday, so... Well, the volcano's going to erupt and create a cloud uh, that goes halfway around the world. And a well, plane... that, that could happen, potentially. Yeah, it's happened before. It happened, 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 Iceland. happened with them when Vesuvius went off the other day. Uh, well, not the other day, last year, no, late last year. Did the ice cloud go half around the world? Though? No, but it was covered the Canary Islands. Mm. It did it, but the, the Iceland thing did, did, yeah. Because it blocked all the, the travel, didn't it? it yeah, all, yeah. That's when Robert Lewandowski was going to sign for Blackburn. Oh Rivers my god! For four point three million pounds, which is a fucking bargain. Under we were under Big Sam then, and he's agreed this deal to sign Robert Lewandowski. You had to come over, do the medical, do the paperwork. The ash cloud would fucking stopped him flying and he went to uh, a German club instead. Gutted. Perry, you don't just get the train, Robert. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amazing act of God. 
He could have had the best striker in the could world. Could have had the best striker in the world. And Blackburn Rovers would have been incredible. No, we got the, the best striker in the world. You almost said Zidane, didn't you? We did, didn't we? Yeah. Turned him down. Turned, we said we were against oh, signing right. Zidane for something Smith like the next bit. Because he had Tim Sherwood. Yeah. And then we sold him and didn't buy Zidane. <laughs> Turned down Zidane for Tim Sherwood. <laughs> Sir Tim Sherwood. See, they're talking football now, guys, so. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. So this plane that yeah goes missing for a month and returns and everybody on the plane said it was only three hours. So this is mm. happening on the 28th of June this year. So a plane goes missing for a month but everyone on the plane has only, time has only gone three hours. Yeah. That's okay. Cool. And then uh, yeah the 2nd of August we make contact with an underground civilization. Well maybe that's the uh, Bigfoot. The Morlocks. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got all the lizard people. All yeah, the Nazis. Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Who can say? The Hibernazis. They've been hibernated under these. The Hibernazis. Yeah, Hibernazis. Or Hypernazis, because they're more fanatical now. They've been 78 years of brainwashing while they've been in cryogenic sleep. No surrender now. Well, I can't wait. <laughs> no, so it's fantastic, don't it? Hey, I'm quite looking forward to, like, certainly the alien bit. It's been a while since the human race had a good old fashioned punch up, hasn't it? I'm quite looking forward to the plane disappearance because it sounds to me like everyone's fine. So we don't have to mourn. So that's fine. They weren't even my badges. We know they've, they're clearly going to get like abducted by aliens or something. Clearly, or fly into some kind of pocket dimension. And so either way, it's going to be a fucking awesome discovery. Oh, yeah. We just need to hope, hope we can work out what happened to them. Did we look back on the old... It's very specific was, dates as well, mm-hmm. so... We've done a few TikTok time travellers. <laughs> they've all got, been wrong. Yeah, they've all been... <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. All the dates. There's no alien yeah. invasion yet. 14,000 uh, scientists didn't go missing overnight <laughs> prior to the alien invasion. Yeah. Yeah. These things haven't happened. I, I, and this is from the Daily Star, which I think we can all what? agree. <laughs> you don't think the Daily Star's like super accurate on everything that it writes <laughs> no no I, I disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> that was sarcasm if nobody could tell that it's not that it could be the finest investigation for journalist you know journalistic thing in the world to be honest or it could be only one step away from the day sport <laughs> it pretty much is isn't it yeah, it's just it's some daily tits. sport without boobs isn't yeah. it yeah just tits and lies in the Daily Sport, innit? <laughs> tits and lies! That's how you overcome it. That's how it happened to Rome. Tits and lies! Yeah. yeah. Okay, next up. Alright. I thought I was going to die. Otters attack a British man in Singapore. <gasps> this is your wildlife otters. attacking themes. Otters, See, man. The world's wildlife are gathering together to wipe us out. Mm. That's what they Well, it was a bloody bat that brought <coughs> COVID about. Exactly. So, there you go. Jesus. A bat or Chinese scientists. One of the two. Came from a bat originally. Do yeah, George. That's where all this coronavirus has come from, isn't it? Yeah. Then they manipulate him in the labs to they make him. They played with it, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Graham George Spencer says he was bitten 26 times in 10 seconds while out for a morning. <laughs> wow. That's quite a few bites, that. It is. So yeah. imagine that though, like, oh, look at these beautiful little. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> be like that scene out of Jurassic Park number two. Yeah. Where mm. the little girl's like yeah. getting munched on by the um, little compies. Mm. That's how Hammond. Is it Hammond? Is that in that film? John Hammond. John Hammond, that's how he dies in the book. Yes. Ah. He gets eaten by them. Yeah. He's, I think he's like injured his leg. Great book. Great book. Yeah. Much better than the films. Is like, it? I never read the It's book. like the films amalgamated, isn't it? Mm. Basically. It's one, two, and three. Not very much of two, because two was in the city, wasn't it, essentially? Yeah. But I don't mind. It's like a little two. essence of two. Yeah. But, but it wants one to and three. Yeah. It's more like three than one. Mm. If that makes sense. But mm. it's got that one storyline to it, but the way Jurassic World Park is, it's more like in number three. I didn't like three. But, but you know what else is there? I had a double I had a double edition, it was Jurassic Park and Congo, which I think is still. Nah, we went to the same, which is that different. I, I like Congo. 
Was that the one with the mental white gorillas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like the face eating ones with the big fucking teeth. <laughs> no, yeah, crack your skull. It was a bit weird, that mm. one. But the book is fucking awesome. Is it? It is. It genuinely is. The, the, the film, which I still like, still does it a disservice. Mm. The book is like a, a million times. The book's ace. It goes into real. They spend like a month at the camp and they get in like fucking snuck up on the night having their heads crushed with stone paddles by gorillas who then retreat into this weird chittering noise. Mm. Sweet as fuck. It's like quite a, a tense sort of story. It's good. I recommend anyone to read Congo. Where were we? Manic Otters. Manic Otters. Love it. Well, I don't love it. It's terrifying. I said the animals are moving quietly, but they went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and the man ran towards him. Spencer told the paper the runner was able to avoid the animals. And Spencer was not as lucky. Oh, that cunt! You know, he's disturbed. Away. So he got attacked by twenty otters. Yeah. Poor bugger. They lunged at him, biting his ankles, legs and buttocks, and causing, him to fall, causing him to fall over. I actually thought I was going to die. They were going to kill me, he added. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Spencer's friend, who was about 15 paces away from him, ran up screaming in a bid to scare away the others. I've been bitten 26 times in 10 seconds. If he wasn't my friend, I don't think I'd still be here. I'd be dead, he told the local outlet today. That's the name of the outlet. The pair said they ran towards a visitor centre, still pursued by the otters. <laughs> and after staff at the centre treated with a wound, Spencer took himself off to nearby Glen Eagles Hospital, where he was giving tetanus shots and oral antibiotics. He left with an armed guard, and the otters were waiting outside, all smoking fags, waiting for <laughs> him as he, to pounce. <laughs> Wearing little leather jackets. <laughs> yeah. One had a chain, yeah, one had a little, a little metal bat. <laughs> one had a switchblade, he was just threatening, <laughs> taking it away. Yeah. You know, he, he had a grease back hair. There was another one flicking a coin. Yeah. Catching it and flicking it again, catching it, flicking it again. <laughs> Well, maybe it's the Mother Sopranos. They're all wearing them weird tracksuits, some velvet tracksuits. <laughs> Armour for them, don't. No, at um, least it wasn't a beer. That's true. That would be quite horrifying, to be fair, because otters aren't small. No. They've got some nasty, nasty teeth. And Clearly. Could you imagine 20 of them? You know what I mean? 20 bloody chickens attacking you would be scary. Yeah. Uh -huh. 20 sparrows attacking you would be quite scary maybe not quite as scary but it would still give you there'd be some form of mm. fear involved if, if suddenly 20 little sparrows started dive bombing you yeah I've seen the birds exactly yeah, that, well that's kind of <laughs> I wasn't going to go for crows I was going for sparrows but yeah mm. all, all, all type of birds in that one isn't there I'm sure the seagulls all the yeah, birds going on yeah. today yeah and um, he said he's returned to the hospital three times to treat his wounds and the attack has cost him about $1,200 in medical bills. And this is Singapore Botanic Gardens. There, Spencer was told that the authorities were investigating the incident. Investigating the incident? Uh, <laughs> what are they going to do? CSI? Find the otters? Off to CSI? Yeah. <laughs> They're going to get the good otters to come in and one will be like Horatio from CSI yeah. Vegas who have a little jacket on and he'll badge reckon... and go and he'll grab and sweep. <laughs> Put reckon... sunglasses on and go, it's time to honour down. I reckon there'll be a lineup and there'll be like an otter and a badger. Who's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Screw it. laughs> Talking a little lot, I was like, show us in the doll where the, where the, otter, where the otter did something. <laughs> Although river otters often appear benign, the animals have been known to attack people in the past. In May, a 77 year old man was reportedly bit on the leg by an otter while exercising near Kalang River in Singapore. Uh, residents of Anchorage, Alaska were confronted by a pack of aggressive otters in September. And a spate of reported incidents saw the group attack dogs, children, and adults near creeks, rivers, and lakes in the area. It's the otter apocalypse, they're rising up. They realise what we're doing to them and the planet, and they're fighting back. And I, for one, welcome our new otter overlords. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm thinking of an episode of South Park here. I know what you're on about. It's all my Cartman goes in the future, and the and only atheists, and like, but there's the groups of sea otters who've evolved and they're yeah. intelligent. Yeah, yeah. And that's then like, it. One's the, the scientific atheist group, the other's the atheist scientific group. That's right. And they're fighting over who's right. And the science comes before atheism. No atheism comes before science, and that's the whole. Something like that. 
And Cartman just wants his um, PS3 no, or whatever it is. Nintendo, Nintendo Switch. Wii. Nintendo Wii. Wii. That's it. Yeah. You see a group of ours. Just don't don't mess with him, man. Just fucking run. Stay away from the creepy little fuckers. To be fair, he was fired until some other guy ran towards them, disturbed them, and then they attacked him. And the other man got away. Scott Do you think this is a targeted attack? It could be. Do you think this is a, a Princess Diana of, of sing, in the Singapore world? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> uh, he runs past a group of otters and they attack him and kill him? <laughs> no. No? Okay. Maybe not. Okay. Moving on. Researchers made a camera that's the size of a grain of salt and it can take images that are better than existing tests. That's fantastic, but do we need cameras that are grains of salt and why aren't we curing cancer? Yeah. I'm sure someone's on that as well. <laughs> Maybe they have, but they need to fucking... I need to know about, I need to know about that. Seems important. See, so you might be very good for taking pictures of things inside the body you can't normally get to. Very true, it? very true. So... I was just thinking smartphones. <laughs> the Instagram generation has just got salt sized cameras. Mm-hmm. Terrible. A newly developed camera the size of a grain of salt can take clear, full colour images at the level of cameras that are 500,000 times larger. Researchers at Princeton University and the University of Washington created a new type of optical system called a metasurface to shrink the camera's hardware down to size and combine this with machine learning image processing that enables a camera to produce clear images in natural lighting. Previously, micro cameras could only produce useful images in perfect laboratory settings. Awesome. That's, mm. that's impressive. Probably got that tech from the greys, didn't we? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. No. 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 It's a genius of these scientists. And some nudging from the greys. Nudge in the right direction. This yep. will be great though, you could swallow it instead of having endoscopes. Yeah, true, never thought of that either. Swallow yeah. it and, you know, take photos all the way through the, you know, stomach and the digestive system. And you could put it on your chips with the rest of the salt, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't notice it then. Mm. Oh, maybe that could be uh, government's new way of tracking people. Through fish and chips? Yeah. <laughs> Through a bit of salt. Yeah. You know, put a bit of salt on your fish and chips and you get these little cameras inside your belly and they take pictures of what you eat. I don't know what they do with it, but you never <laughs> know. They don't need to. They've got mobile phones, that's the thing. They, everyone's got a mobile that tracks us all the time. Triangulates our position constantly. Mm. Yeah, so... Anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. It is pretty cool, to be fair. Yeah? I like that. Oh, I saw this article. So, there's an article that says cannabis could prevent COVID, studies claim. Some Russia Today, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, so the next breakthrough in stopping COVID-19 may come not from big farmers, but from humble pot plant. Researchers in Oregon in the US discovered that two compounds found in the devil's lettuce can stop the virus in its tracks. Uh, Well, let's put it this way. I mean, you must have COVID. Nope. Yeah. No. Uh, oh, you are. Yeah, yeah. You don't smoke enough then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I don't. No, you're right. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. No, I. Well, I'm well, not the right. Well, 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 I just had it over Christmas and I didn't get it. My kids got it. I got ill from a bloody. I was, I was living with it. The flu, but I kept testing myself and it was negative. Do you know what? I, I was the last one to get it by like five days. Mm. And I probably. Re- I think I recovered a little bit quicker than Laura did. Definitely. Mm. I was recovering pretty much at the same time as her and she had it like five, six days prior to me. So maybe there is something in it. Mm. I wasn't hospital hospitalised or anything like that. So Yeah. No. But yeah, I picked it up from kids at school basically. Uh, kids brought it home with them and mm. yeah. Well of course they're all coughing each other's faces spreading it around now. Yeah. I do think this is the reason why I haven't got it though. I smoke weed every day. Yeah. Smoking, Smoke weed apparently. every day. Yeah. Smoking full stop apparently, because um, the smokers' lungs are more naturally greasy. They they also so they, said the little spiky virus particles can't dig in as easily. I remember them saying in the beginning, the very beginning of COVID, that nicotine yeah. was being proved as I a really that, good yeah. thing mm. for COVID. So smokers were less likely to get it as bad anyway, maybe. 
because yeah. the nicotine. I've got a double whammy. I've got the, the split. Nicotine got, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you do get it, and your lungs are a bit fucked. Yeah. But it's they just say that risk. Just say on it. So rather than attempting to smoke their way to immunity, Pusses. the uh, <laughs> team of scientists at the university <laughs> isolated isolated <laughs> two compounds. Can I buy jet? What the hold on? Bear with me on this one. Two compounds from hemp. So one is a cannabigerolic acid. Cannabigerolic? Yeah, cannabigerolic acid. And another. Cannabidolic. Cannabidolic. Diolic. Diolic. Diolic, yeah. Yeah. Cannabidiolic acid. CBDA and CBGA. Okay. And found that they bind to the coronavirus spike protein and in turn prevent it from binding to the outer membrane of human cells. Mm. This latter binding process is normally how the virus enters the human's lungs and other organs. The two compounds are precursors, precursors to CBG and CBD which are widely legal and available to consumers. CBG and CBD cannabis oils and extracts are commonly used to treat anxiety, sleep disorders, epilepsy and a wide range of other ailments. So obviously there's a lot of a lot of studies that we are all starting to learn now what a wonder drug cannabis yeah. is. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's almost like it grew up alongside us, isn't it? Yeah, well, this seen it stop seizures in kids. Well, this is it. Uh, yeah. There was Amazing. Um, oh, one of the footballers, uh, black footballers. So Les? No, he was the one that did the John Fashionu. John Fashionu Fash. went out over to America. And he was he broke down because he was so upset at the fact that he was seeing treatments in America for people with these having these severe seizures and things like that, and the way it was almost curing them, not completely, but mm. almost. When someone's having like 150 seizures a day and it's going down to like one or two a week, yeah, you, you know what I mean. Like that it. is amazing, and he was broken down because his son I believe it's his son has been suffering for years with these seizures and nothing that we can our medical allowance (laughs) should I say is able to provide him with what's going to actually fix him and then he's seeing this guy in America not just one there's a few of these cases they all kind of went around and spoke to him there was a few like celebrities that had issues and they were all going around checking what it was like to smoke weed and things like that and should we legalise cannabis? Yeah, 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 I love it that. It was all to do with that. But John Fashion was with them, at, and he he, he wanted, wouldn't smoke, would he? No, he wouldn't. No, but he was there because he wanted to see what all this fuss was about, saying it's a cure for this same disorder that his child has. And then when he saw it, he, he was just gutted, gutted that our government will not allow it. Yeah, because no, it's no. because it's illegal cannabis. And now they've started allowing the CBD and things like that, which is a, a big step. It's the same as psilocybin as well. Yeah, but there's the magic there's, mushrooms. There's the depression. Been, yeah. yeah, there's been lots of studies that have shown that cannabis melts cancerous tumours and things like that. There was a study. Well, there was a guy. His own study, essentially, his baby child, only a couple of years old, like if that, had a really bad brain tumour inoperable massive thing and he she was going to die mm. there was it was last resort and the dad thought well do you know what why not try it so he yeah. tried um, it was cannabis oil and within a few weeks it had noticeably shrunk this tumour right. and it actually cured his child uh, you know what I mean, and nothing else was ever going to work. It was inoperable, etc., etc. I genuinely do think there's something to do with the healing properties of it. I mean, it always cures cold to me. For thousands, if I was to smoke it, it would always cure cold to me. For thousands of years, it's been used as a medicinal yeah. herb by lots and lots and lots of different countries. It's mm. only been within like past a hundred years or so, it's been demonised and illegal. After the Great Depression, after the Prohibition, yeah. you had the huge government, uh, what was it, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, sat around going, 
What do we do now? Yeah. Oh, hemp's a, actually weed's a threat to the, the booze industry, which is no going. So it's a threat to our mates who are like who own who own paper mills. You use hemp for pretty much anything, can't you? Mm. Yep. So okay, they they demonised it. They demonised it. They demonized it. Mm. Think how easy it is to cultivate it as well. Yeah, it's a really hardy plant. Yeah. It's a weed. They yeah. made jet planes out of hemp. Yeah. It's great building material. No, if you smoke it on the fucking way over, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> <laughs> just having a fucking spark up the wall of the plane. <laughs> hemp isn't psychoactive, is it? No. 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 You still try. <laughs> I, I remember you, you would. I remember you fucking burning your mum's wallpaper just by just holding your lighter against it because you were high. So <laughs> you were chasing something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was really high. That's it. But yeah, interesting yes. theory. Mm. I do think it has healing properties, though. I do. I think it can. Yeah. S- it's always yeah. killed me of a cold, I'll say that. If I ever smoked it. It's anti inflammatory, isn't it? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, and you look at all these native tribes and that, and they've all got medicine in the forest, haven't they? In the jungle. Yeah. They know what plants treat what, and. It's all that kind of stuff, is it? It's yeah. all weed. It's all I think, I think, of weeds. Yeah, there's something it's out there smoking, for every they? disease. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've always cure, said that. Yeah. Well, I, I remember as a nine-year-old, we did a thing about like the Brazilian rainforests and the Amazonian jungles and all that kind of thing. We did a massive thing on the fact that the deforestation that it kind of opened my eyes to that, and I always. I had an interest in we I remember learning then just think how of the knowledge the medicines, of the reasons. Yeah. There's out totally. there's out there that mm. we haven't discovered. I know. And they're knocking down these yeah. rainforests left, yeah. right and centre. We'll never discover them. No. There's ones out there for AIDS, cancer that they just need to be found. Yeah. Don't forget the old the Middle Ages, the witch hunts, all those wise women living in the woods, tending the herbs, the cure yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, they weren't evil Burned as witches. witches. Yeah, I was thinking were. of the medicine man and all that. Sean Connery. Yeah, the, I, I, I was picturing yeah. it. I was hearing the drums. I'm going to have to watch that film again. I've never seen that. I've never seen that either. Yeah, it's really good. I haven't seen that since I was a kid. Medicine man. I've never seen that in my life. Sean Connery. Yeah. He goes into the jungle, then he? he finds his flower or something that's... Yeah, the vermilion. Oh, you remember it? Wow. Impressive. Fucking hell, Claire. Have you watched it? <laughs> Quite a few. <laughs> you know, when you just had a few uh, movies on on tape back mm. in the day. Ah, uh, you just watched them over and over again. Yeah, that was one of the ones that we had on tape. Kindergarten. So did we, uh... Kindergarten. <laughs> I love, fucking love Kindergarten Cop. Oh, fucking hell, Transformers 9 Oh, right, let's call it a day where Ben goes into all the things that he loves because we're all day. <laughs> <laughs> Love some of the 90s. Yeah. Oh, if I have to. Just misspent you. All right. Well, I'll be Ben. Thank you very much for listening. You can follow us on Facebook at Cutting the Bull in the Post Truth Apocalypse, SoundCloud at Cutting the Bull in the PTA, and YouTube at Apocalypse Bull. Uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment, listen, tell your friends, whatever, really. Um, yeah, and no, don't be one of like those guys. Hey, don't be like any of that. Don't get eaten by badgers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been Mike. Thanks for listening. Peace out. May the force be with you, Claire. You're next. <laughs> hi, uh, hi, hi, hi. I'm Claire, <laughs> and I've been drinking gin. And I'm very high. <laughs> yeah. I'm drinking hi. gin, uh, but I won't get COVID. <laughs> just don't get out the car, innit? Just stay mm-hmm. in the car. Stay in the goddamn car, yeah. And I've been Pete. Smoke weed every day. Yeah. Keep COVID away. Yeah. Weed a day keeps the COVID away.